Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we get to today's guest, I want to introduce properly Six Sigma co host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. How are you, Scott Todd? Mark, I am phenomenal. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, busy closing deals. Just sold a piece of property, 50 acre uh, this morning in uh, nice. Texas. So nice. it's, it's always a great way to start the day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to wake up to cash every day in your bank account. It's fun to, uh, to hear like, hey, we're going to have a sale today. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's not easy if you're not, you know, doing something to differentiate yourself, right? Right. Um, in the marketplace. And so who better to help us learn more about creating more passive income for our, ourselves, making our sales easier than bringing in an expert, a recognized expert by Inc. Magazine as a top digital marketer and top youth marketer. And by Red Letter Resumes as a top personal branding expert who went from being almost homeless to becoming a personal branding expert whose content has been read over 10 million times. He's amassed a social media following well over 250,000 people. He's been featured in too many publications to name that a Wikipedia page was made about him. Our guests today for the Art of Passive Income podcast is Leonard Kim from leonardkim.com and he's also the managing partner of Influence Tree. Leonard Kim, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing, Mark? Pulse is normal. Most is fine. <laughs> um, Leonard... <laughs> What what happened, man? You were you were homeless, and then you got out of it. Tell tell us the story. So back in about 2010, I believe every single thing that I tried just kept failing over and over. Like in 2008, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hit this real estate thing. I'm gonna go hard at it. I'm gonna do everything I can. I got like 25 um, properties out in uh, Florida. Loan doc signed, everything signed, everything was ready to go. Then all of a sudden, Bear Stearns went on me, and I'm like, there went my $50,000 a month. What am I going to do? So instead of making that money, I basically made nothing. After that, I um, started working. I was like, you know, real estate's not going to work for me. What's going to work? Maybe investments. That's a hot topic, right? So I tried doing that. Then the stock market crashed and burned. So I worked at a few startups, and just because the economy was so bad and everything I was trying just wasn't working. I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I give up. I'm just going to lay in bed and cry every single day and <laughs> not pay rent, drink and be like, um, whatever happens, happens. Next thing you know, I'm showering in the dark. I get this eviction notice and I'm like, okay, um, I guess I'm going to pack my stuff up and go live under a bridge. I called my mom. I'm like, mom, I'm going to go live under a bridge for the rest of my life. Have a good life. She calls my grandma. My grandma picks me up and she saves me. I'm like, I thought you disowned me when I was 16 years old. <laughs> and I stayed at her place for about six months. But then by that point, I'm like, I can't live here anymore. Uh, I need to uh, get my stuff together and really get back on track. So I borrowed a few hundred dollars from my friend, moved back to LA, found any job I could. Um, worked at that for about two years and realized I wasn't getting anywhere. And I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Obamacare kicked in, um, taxes raised. And I was like, I can't afford lunch anymore. Things are so bad. So because I got so sick and tired of being sick and tired, I started writing. And within the first six months of writing from May or June of 2013 to December of 2013, I had 2 million views on my content, 3,100 social media followers from three. And, um, was named the top writer on a site called Quora. The next year that escalated into 10 million views, I wrote a book, um, I had a great girlfriend at the time who ended up breaking up with me because I had imposter syndrome because I'm like, I, I don't deserve any of this stuff. I'm a nobody who was homeless at one point. So um, she broke up with me and I had that realization that I need to own up to everything that I've accomplished. And I was able to move to the next step. Then I started thinking, how do I monetize off all of the success I created? And that's when I started generating um, revenue streams to generate passive income like we're talking about now. 
Scott Todd, what do you think? So how, how do you blow up and get like that many uh, social media followers, you know, in like a six month window? Like that's, I mean, there's people that have been writing and doing stuff, you know, 18 months and they don't, they don't connect with people. What, what is it that, that got you there? Now, from studying history, like let's say I'm reading a story about George Washington or another president or another great leader in the world like Napoleon, whoever it may be. All I really see is their highlight reel, all of their successes. So me as a normal person, I'm reading that and I'm like, this person's so far disconnected from me, I can't even relate. There's no way I could ever be president because I'm nothing like George Washington. That person's flawless. The only mistake he ever made was cutting down an apple tree. And I'm like, I made a lot more mistakes than that. There's no way I could really connect to that. Then I looked at my friends who were, um, a lot of my friends were like those millionaires who spoke at seminars and everything. And they had a formula for their success where they talked about their hard times and um, how they got to where they are today. So they kind of laid out more of a hero's journey that people could follow and relate to because everyone feels those pains and those um, hardships. Me, I'm like, you know what, maybe I could reverse engineer what my friends do. But since I'm not successful, I can talk about all the things that I failed at instead. So people wouldn't follow in those same footsteps. And at first I was scared of it. I thought people would judge me and call me a loser, call me this, call me that. And say, look, you screwed up at your entire life. Um, there's nothing that this message is really going to do. But out of pure coincidence, people were like, you're such an inspiration. Wow, this is so motivational. I can't believe you're still here. I can't believe you're doing this and this and this. And I kind of had the reverse effect of what I thought would happen. Very and people just bought into it. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, there's this word out there called narrogant. How do I pronounce it? Uh, narrogance. Narrogance. What is narrogance? You made so, up a word, Leonard. So it's a sense of naivete mixed with arrogance. Like, imagine I'm an 18-year-old kid, which I used to be, or a 21-year-old kid when I was trying to do that real estate thing. Um, back then, um, like, I was cocky and arrogant. I'm like, I, I have a background in sales. I could do anything. I could go out there and I could sell anything in the world. So I felt that I was, like, untouchable. And that was my arrogance mixed with a sense of naivete because I was only like 21 at the time. I didn't know any better. I didn't have any real life experience to back those decisions. So I went out there and I was like, you know, if I'm going to go out there, I could do it. I didn't think, oh, I need to learn how operations work. I need to learn how laws work or any of those other factors. I just took those limited pieces of information that I knew and held on to and went out there and tried to run with it. You can see the same type of things with um, like, let's say I'm listening to a Kanye West rap song. He talks about, oh, power or, oh, you have to just go out there and be the man and you have to think that you're successful at everything you do. So when you think that way, it creates all these people who have a sense of arrogance and they think that they're the best at what they do, but they're naive at the same time because they're like young, 20, 22 years old, 18 years old, and they really think they could go out there and change things, but they don't know the full picture of everything. like. Um, we acquire knowledge much, fa uh, much faster than we acquire wisdom. So wisdom takes time to learn from real world experience, which most of these people don't have. So they go out there and they think they're the best, but they're not really the best. And that creates a huge disconnect from them and the rest of the world. And that sets them up for failure. That allows them to get scammed into like those get rich quick schemes and all those other things. Kind of like I was as a kid. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's very, very cool. So you you start writing and you become like a big deal in Quora, right? Um, how did you pivot and then say, okay, well now I'm an expert. How do I monetize this? Like, what were the steps that you took, and when did that when did that realization happen? Like, I can I can actually monetize this. Well, at first, I was trying to monetize a completely different business. I wanted to make one of those websites like Squarespace, which is like a website builder where you can just push out a ton of websites at once and just sell them for a subscription. But I realized it takes way too much money. I'm like, oh, I could raise like 50 grand, but it costs like 500 grand to do. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I could do this, but it costs this much more. Oh, I need engineers, but I don't know anything about engineering. So I kind of gave up on that plan. But 
during that whole process, when I was setting that up, I had messages in my inbox, like thousands of them that said, can you teach me how to do what you did? Can you teach me? Can you teach me? Can you mentor me? Can you do this? And I was like, everyone keeps telling me that I'm the expert at this and they all come to me for help. I can monetize this. So it just dawned upon me that if this is what everyone expected me to do, it just made sense to just go out there and teach people how to do what I did. And I set up a course to teach everyone how to do that. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you set up this course, you start getting customers, then what happens? Um, I mean, it, for the customers, what happens is they go through the course for like maybe two or three months. They're able to really identify how to position their brand, go out there and do the same things that I did, but for their specific niches and their specific businesses. And they contact me back and they're like, we got a few clients and we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. And then they start telling their friends and they start telling their friends and it just has this compounding effect. Scott Todd, you're, you're, you've, been, you've been doing some personal branding. Yeah, I'm, I'm really. What are, I'm, what are the challenges? How can Leonard help you? Yeah, I, I think that uh, you know there, there's so many platforms. There's so many platforms out there that um, you know what you start. What I think you start to get is where you try to where you try to attack all of the platforms at one time. You start to get a fragmented uh, a fragmented presence, right? You know, you get you get some followers over here on this platform. You get some followers over here. And then they don't necessarily come back to your central hub, which could be your own website. So is, should, should you just like pick one platform, whether no matter what it is and go deep into that one first before you expand? Or do I follow like a Grant Cardone model where I'm everywhere omnipresent, uh, be, be every place, every platform? Um, I guess that really depends on like how much experience you have and how long you've been doing everything. For me personally, what I did is I did a deep dive specifically onto Quora. I mastered that platform. I understand the entire algorithm of it, the ins and outs, how to make something go viral, how to make something not go viral. And I studied that platform until I mastered it. Then after I mastered Quora, I moved over to Twitter and I mastered that platform by trial and error and figuring out how to actually get the most out of the platform. Now, if you want to be an expert and you want to make money from your um, expertise online, um, if you have one platform mastered, chances are you may make some money, but you won't really make as much money as you want to make. If you have two mastered, you'll make good money. If you have three platforms mastered, you'll make a killing. What's That's why Grant goes out there and he does so many platforms now. But then at the beginning, Grant probably started on one or two platforms. Yeah, he, he went, he, he was on YouTube. YouTube yeah. was where he, he just started putting all his, all his videos and presence onto YouTube. But now because he mastered that platform, he was able to go out there and master Facebook, where, which is where I recognized him. Then he was able to use that to leverage into Snapchat. So he used one network to leverage into another one to leverage into another one. But if you don't have that first one mastered, you can't get people to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah, the so, great, so stop, like stop, just go deep on one of them mm -hmm. and then expand out. And the great thing about any of these platforms, whether it's Quora, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it may be, if you're churning out content and people know that they can link back to your site, um, like most people, what they think a landing page is, is they think it's their land, they think it's their homepage for their website. But it's not really that. It's the first point of contact that someone reads your content or sees your content. So if I'm watching a Grant Cardone video for the first time, that's my landing page. I'm being introduced to Grant the first time there. I'm learning all about him. Then my second point of impression is going to his website and looking him up. Now I already have trust for Grant. I've already seen something that he created. The second page is designed to like lead me to the next phase. Most people make this mistake where they think their homepage, like LeonardKim.com, GrantCardone.com, or whatever, is where people are first entering to see them. But how many people out there are Googling Grant Cardone before they find out who he is first from another platform, another video, or an article, or something like that? So the content that you're creating, that's your landing page. Your homepage is what ties them into what your message is so they can see more about you. 
So it's not, it's like the secondary layer in the sales process, not the first one. And a lot of people go out there and they start selling on their homepage when they're supposed to be building that relationship even further and then progressing to a sale from there. Yeah. Mark, I mean, that's, that's really what we also teach kind of with, with land investing too, is, you know, you, you can have a, a land investment website, but no one's going there. They, they don't even know you exist. They don't, they're, they're yeah. not, you know, you can, you can mess with SEO all you want, but that's, I mean, you're, you're going down the wrong path because you, you really need to throw yourself into the, to the stream of traffic and leverage other websites to, to get your name out there. And then when they come back to your website, it's still not about selling them. It's more about who are you? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's more about your identity and so that they know, like, and trust you. I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they, they think like there's this web presence like Amazon and we're going to sell land over, over our own Amazon site. And that's just not the way it works. Yeah. And from how I see it and like, I don't think a lot of people really care if you put all your accolades up there. They're like, Oh great. You're um, good at what you do. Who really cares? Like, let's say you like fishing and I like fishing and on your website, you mentioned that you like fishing. And if I like fishing too, I'm going to be like, Oh, this guy's just like me. He has similar interests. Let's say you like a certain TV show that I like, like a homepage and a bio about you should really be more about your interests and everything. Because when I was raised doing sales, step one was meet and greet. Step two was sell yourself. Step three was sell your dealership. Step four was qualify. So what we're at is the meet and greet is the first point of contact where they watch your video, they read your article or something like that. Step two is where you sell yourself on your website and selling yourself isn't going out there and saying, Oh, look, I'm the best at this, that, 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 that it's, Hey, I like ice cream. Like in the in-person conversation, you ask questions like, do you like going to the beach? Do you have kids? Do you have this or that or that? Where do you like to travel? And you find things and you're like, oh, me too. I went here, I went there. And you start finding um, points that you can build rapport with. But when you're online, um, you can't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. So you have to talk about what you like instead. So if the breeder likes those things too, they're like, oh, me too. I like those things too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I you know, marketing is endless, right? And there's so much out there on it. So Leonard Kim, how do you differentiate yourself as, you know, someone who's, you know, a valuable contributor in this massive market? I differentiate myself by just trying to be as real as possible, being as authentic as possible. Because most of the content, when I look out there and I see it, people are like, oh, these are the 10 things you need to do to um, X, Y, Z. And sure, they showcase their expertise in it, but they don't really highlight any of their personality. They're coming across as an expert, not as someone that you could go out and trust. So like if I'm reading an article and it says um, 10 things you need to know about financial planning and the financial planner writes this article, they can put out the best advice out there in the world, but then I can't connect with that person as a reader. And if I can't connect with them as a reader, then I probably won't be hiring them um, to do my finances. But if that person's more relatable and they use similes and examples that I can really buy into, then I'm like, oh, you know what? This person's not only an expert, but they have a personality behind them too. This is someone I can work with. And I put my personality into most of the things I create. Yeah, I love it. There's a, there's a great word out there called strategic polarization, right? You mm -hmm. don't want to be all things to all people, right? And I, you know, I say this all the time, and Scott's heard me say this many times, but um, a great quote by Dan Kennedy is, if you're not um, offending someone by noon, you're not working hard enough, <laughs> right? So, yeah. And so you can't be all things to all people, and you shouldn't want to be all things to all people. And you can do this in so many different ways that you, you're, you're connecting with your people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Grant Cardone is a great, good example of this. You know, he curses, he's uh, off color, right? He's, he is polarizing a lot of people that are going to be offended by that type of content, right? But yes. he's really going to have loyal following for those people that really love that and love that kind of, you know, um, 
you know, that, that strategic polarization because you don't see it a lot, right? Yeah, you don't see it a lot. And that's what separates him from the rest of the crowd. And that's what separates me from the rest of the crowd too, because we use our genuine personalities and we put it out there. And that's what, like, that's what separates someone who has like 5,000 followers and calls himself an expert to the person who has 5 million followers and doesn't call themselves an expert because they're leaning more with their personality and who they are and like how they were raised to be, as opposed to just putting on a mask and pretending to be an absolute expert at what they do without any personality. Like Gary Vaynerchuk, he's always like, go out there and showcase your expertise, showcase your expertise. Sure, back in 2008, when he did that, that would have worked because there was no landscape, no competition or anything like that. But nowadays, everyone's doing that. So how do you separate yourself from the crowd? You have to go out there and you have to showcase who you really are. And so many people are showcasing, scared of showcasing who they are because they're scared that the world's going to judge them because maybe they don't feel that they're up to par with what they want the world to see. So how do you get over that fear? Um, so in life, I figure that there's two different fears. One's the fear of failing or the fear of success. To get over that fear, what you have to do is you have to focus on to the habits that um, will make you successful as opposed to the end goal. If you focus on to the end goal, then you're always disappointed because you're never there. Um, for, the, uh, ha for the fear of being judged by other people, what you have to do is realize it, the more scared you are of something, the more that whatever message you have is going to go out there and resonate and connect with others. So your deepest, darkest fear, if you were able to go and put that out into the world and just put it up out there, people would be like, wow, I relate to this. You're an inspiration. You're this, you're that. But in my mind, I'm thinking everyone's going to think I'm a loser. Everyone's going to think I'm this or that because of that deep, dark fear. So that fear, you have to use it as a motivating factor to know that you have something that the world's going to buy into as opposed to something that you should be scared to let out into the world. I, I think, uh, I, I think you, you obviously have some sound advice. I mean, it comes from, from uh, your experience. I mean, to, to build a platform and an audience like you have coming from where you, where you were, it's something that a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't do. They wouldn't, they wouldn't keep going. And, you know, it's, it's really inspiring to me to see how, you know, you, you go from where you are, where you were, uh, with, with your living at your grandmother's house, uh, to, to continuing to, to, to be on this mission of what you wanted to accomplish. You didn't, you didn't let your goals stop. And, you know, that's a great example of, to me, of someone who just kept moving his feet, just, you know, yeah, you got down and out, you, you got, uh, you got kicked around, but then, you know, you got back up. And it just reminds me of, you know, like a, a Tyson quote, you know, that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? You know, like you <laughs> get punched in the face and then, then all of a sudden your plan is out the window and you got to refigure out what's, what's, what you're going to do. And then you turn back around and you just keep moving forward. And, you know, you don't take your eye off the prize that you want. But I think a lot of times people get punched in the face and they didn't know that it would maybe hurt as bad as it's going to hurt. <laughs> right. And then they're like, I don't know if I can move forward. Just yeah, keep been... moving forward. You know, we all get punched down. You know, you, yours was more dramatic than anything I think I, I've ever gone through. But that said, you know, it, you know, you, you, you rebounded to a higher point and that's really inspiring. Yeah, and I've been punched in the face a million times all throughout life. I still get punched in the face nowadays. It's just something that constantly happens in life. But one thing I realized is the reason I kept failing in the beginning that almost led me homeless is because I did focus on these, those end goals. I'm like, I want to be a millionaire. I want the Lamborghini. I want this. I want that. I want that. And I kept looking at what I had and like I didn't have any of it. So I kept getting disappointed. I kept trying to take shortcuts to get them faster and nothing worked. But when I started writing back in 2013, like, I'm like, I'm just going to see if this works or not. Like, I had no goals in mind, no destination. I'm like, I'm just going to focus on those habits, writing two or three things a day, just going out there and, you know, taking a walk, waking up early in the morning, thinking what I'm grateful for, just doing these tiny habits that successful people do. Then next thing you know, I had those 2 million views. And if you asked me six months before I had those 2 million views, if I thought I would ever have that, I'd be like, are you crazy? There's no way that would even be possible. But the only reason it was possible is because I took my eyes off the destination and focused on those habits instead.
Yeah. I mean, you're focusing really on the stuff that you can control. And I mean, you can't control how many people are going to view your material, or your content, yeah. but what you can control is you can control, you know, your, your actions. Exactly. And I think that's, that's a key takeaway in this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I love the fact that um, when you can let go of that timeline, right. Amazing things can happen. Right. And you just focus on the journey of it and the effort of it and what happens happens. And not to say you shouldn't pivot, not to say you shouldn't, you know, look at what's working, what's not working. Right. But just kind of, you know, keep going through it and then, you know, have goals, but don't let them not rigid, be flexible mm -hmm. and, and let it all happen. So now Leonard Kim, we're at that point in the podcast where I get to put you on the spot. Are you ready? Sure. All right. So what is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? The thing that probably improved my life the most over this entire process is a book called the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's just four simple agreements and it, it's all laid out in the beautiful story where, um, it's something about the Indian culture where he goes out there on a journey. And I mean, lesson one is like, always do your best. Like, do you really always do your best every single day? I know most of my life, I didn't. But when I started incorporating that into my life, things just got a lot better just because I always try to do my best. And there's three other principles in there. If you read that book, you'll have a great foundation to work off of. And it takes your eyes off of those materialistic things and all those other things that you're going after or how to get more visitors. And it lets you focus on what really matters. So it's four principles that um, you have to incorporate into yourself to go out there and get you to the next phase. Yeah, that's a great book. I got to, I got to revisit that one. And it's not long. I mean, it's, it's not, it's, I forgot. I mean, it's, it, it's like less than a hundred pages, isn't it? I mean, it's a short yeah. book. You can read in like two, three hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Thanks. Scott Todd. Oh, Scott, I lost you there. Oh, oh you there? Okay. okay, yeah. All right, check this out. Uh, go to oaxis.com and I'm look at the, it out right now. And look at the ink case for the iPhone 7. Oh, I saw this. All oh right, so you gosh. get you got the iPhone 7, you know, nice screen and everything. And then you have this nice case that you put on it. And on the back of the case is another screen. And it's using the e-ink, almost like a Kindle, one of the original Kindle versions. So you can have pictures rolling on, like you can have basically change your, um, your, your case, the pictures on your case if you wanted to, or you could use it to e-read. And it's like clear in the sun. It's on my gotta have list. The only problem is, they don't make it for the iPhone 7 Plus. That's what I have. But I was even thinking about like trading the phone and going for just the 7, just for this geeky tool. Okay, so now I have not gotten the new 7 yet because I was, yeah. I was waiting because I couldn't get the Plus. Right. Um, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just get this thing. Yeah, look at this. This is, okay. this is phenomenal. I love this thing. Um, wow. Genius. Yeah. This is let's go crazy. spend some money, man. Let's go spend some money. It's not bad either. It's like 99 bucks. That's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, 99 for a case. But you know what? That Morphe case, Mophius case, whatever it is, the battery thing, that's like 99 bucks. That's so. 99 bucks and it's, it's, it's heavy. And it's not even as cool as this one. You this is cool. Get more battery life, but eh, this is cool. Yeah, I mean, think about if you're at Starbucks and you've got this. I mean, how many new people will you meet? <laughs> on the oh, yeah. i7 yeah. just that alone just for networking alone yeah and just having like this new adventure in life where like people are like what is that right like you can you know yeah How I, get I, one I think of those that's things. cool great this is tip. so cool yeah see look even leonard, <laughs> even leonard Tim. look see leonard, leonard's like man oh man i'm glad i came it's on it's gonna be on podcast. Quora today Best podcast ever. <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly he's like yeah, for the you know the question is what's the best podcast? Leonard Kim's gonna be like, "Art of Passive Income." Here's yeah. the yep. <laughs> she must found out about phone case. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. All right. Well, my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Leonard Kim, 
at leonardkim.com. Um, today's podcast is sponsored by Loan Geek. If you're not automating your payments via ACH and credit card, I don't know why. You can always make more money. You can't get more time. This thing's going to save you time. And actually, the way we've priced it, it will be a profit center for you. Just email support at thelonegeek.com. Subject line, Loan Geek. I used to spend my Sundays annually entering in payments. And now it's all automated. And my customers love it. And my family's happier because I'm around on Sunday. <laughs> Thanks, Scott Todd. Mar, I still, I still gonna say you need to hire a voiceover guy for that. But I will tell you, you know, I was really shocked the other day because we talk about Lone Geek like I, I don't know all the time, right? Like, and then someone said to me, someone who's in the community and should know, they said to me, uh, "Hey, when's Mark's gonna come out with this Lone Geek thing?" I'm like, "It's out. Listen, it's, call him." So do it. Listen, this isn't just a plug for some future stuff. It's live now. Get on, get on board. Let's do it. Yeah. In, in, uh, and honestly, that's a failure on my part, right? Leonard Kim. Yes. Because I'm not marketing enough, right? It shouldn't just be the podcast and it shouldn't just be email it sh- and Facebook. It should be everywhere, right? I'm, I, I should be constantly talking about it to the point where it's nauseating, right? Yeah, I mean, the more you get your message out there, yeah. people are going to realize that that's what you do. And that's the um, last layer of marketing where you just keep repeating your message the same way until people start recognizing it and they start repeating it themselves. Yeah, and what, what I love about Lone Geek for me is that I have built the, fi- the, the, the program that I personally want because I'm an actual user of it. So whenever something doesn't work, it's, it's like it, doesn't, it affects my business. It doesn't just affect users, right? And um, so it's a personal passion project for me. And then I can go out and, and um, you know, create all this value out in the marketplace that I personally am, am, am benefiting from. So I'm, I'm, I love Lone Geek. It's, it's been really difficult to, uh, <laughs> to execute with. But look, nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. So um, that's great. So learn more. Uh, go to LoneGeek.io. Also, um, give Scott Todd some love. Go to LandMoto.com forward slash wholesale. Um, check out ScottTodd.net. And most importantly, Leonard Kim will tell you, marketing is so important. And if you can automate it, which is my favorite word, go to PostingNomination.com forward slash the Land Geek. Um, and also give me some love. Go to thelandgeek.com and download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Leonard, Kim, are we good? We're good. All right. Well, I'm going to have a link to Leonard's site. Um, he is chock full of more valuable information. We could probably talk to you, Leonard, for another, you know, two, three weeks straight. I mean, we wouldn't even two, get Two, three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, so this is great. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank the listeners. And if you're getting value from this podcast, do us a favor, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. We will then go ahead and send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit, a $97 product for free. Second favorite word, right? Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Leonard. Scott, appreciate it. Let freedom ring. ring. Ah, you did it. You did it. You did it. I love it. It was like the first guest that did it with us. <laughs> really? I mean, we are just a big bowl of awkward over here, but it's good. It's All fun right. that way. It is fun. Look, if we're not having fun, what's the point? All right. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks Anytime. Tonight. See you guys.